In today's video, I am going to introduce you to the concept of health literacy. I'm going to tell you how it's measured, and I'm going to allow you to measure your own health literacy. Hi you, I'm Bruce Lambert from HowCommunicationWorks.com. On this channel, I teach people communication skills so they can improve their relationships, succeed at work, and be more confident. So far, almost all my videos have focused on skills that you might use in everyday conversation or maybe at work to improve your relationships or succeed at work. But a big part of what I do as, as a scientist and as a college professor is to study health communication. This is to look at communication problems in healthcare and to try to use the communication arts and sciences to solve problems in healthcare. One of the biggest problems we have in healthcare is that people cannot understand the health information and medical information that they're given. And a lot of the times, the simplest kind, the most common kind of health information people might get would be something like a piece of written information that you get at the pharmacy when you get a prescription drug, or instructions on how to care for a wound after you've had an injury or after you've had surgery. But especially how to take medication is one of the most common kinds of information people get. And lots and lots and lots of people, millions of people, have difficulty understanding this information. So th the ability to understand uh, written health information and, and artifacts which we encounter in the healthcare setting, uh, documents or interfaces or whatever, we refer to as health literacy. And when we think of literacy, we think of just the ability to read. But health literacy is more than the ability to read. It isn't that most people in America can't actually read, um, although a significant number of adults have trouble even with basic literacy. But the much more common thing is, is the inability to effectively process complicated documents and to be able to both read them, to be able to have numeracy, which is the ability to make simple calculations with numbers or read graphs, and the ability to navigate documents, to find the section of the document that's relevant to your particular need or question. So those things taken together are what we refer to as health literacy. The, the ability to sort of examine and, and process written information and then extract from it the correct inferences, the correct conclusions, and to be able to follow the instructions in a way that you can take care of yourself. That's health literacy. And it turns out, it turns out to be extremely important and correlated with a bunch of, of, of good and bad outcomes. People with high literacy tend to have better outcomes. People with poor literacy tend to have worse outcomes in a variety of different domains. Plus, at a very simple level, we just like people to be able to understand the information we give them in healthcare so they can take care of themselves. Since so much of uh, illness these days is chronic illness that you have to take care of at home, it's not that you're in the hospital and have, and have people taking care of you. So how do we measure people's health literacy? Uh, when I first learned out how people did this, I thought it was so interesting and, and amusing in a way because it turns out the most common way of measuring health literacy these days is to use something that the researchers call the newest vital sign. So they want to use health literacy as a new vital sign like um, the other vital signs are like pulse and respiration rate and temperature and things like that. But health literacy is the newest vital sign. And if you just Google newest vital sign, you can read all about it. I'm going to put some stuff here on the screen in a minute. But it turns out it's a simple test with six questions. And, and the basis for the test is the nutrition label from a haagen ice cream container. That seems amusing at first, but it makes sense when you think about it more carefully. Nutrition labels are not unlike medication instructions and medication labels. And if people can read one, they ought to be able to read the other. So it turns out that research has shown that the nutrition label from a haagen ice cream container um, can be used as the basis for a very scientifically valid and reliable test of health literacy. So right now I'm going to put on the screen the nutrition label for a haagen ice cream container and I'm going to give you a test. I'll leave the image on the screen while I give you the test and you can see how well your, uh, you measure up in terms of health literacy. So let's put that image on the screen right now. Okay, here it is. It's your typical uh, haagen uh, nutrition label that you've seen a million times, the nutrition facts. Uh, you know, gives the serving size and all the other details you see on any standard nutrition label. So you study that label as I ask you the following six questions and we'll see how you do. Question number one, if you eat the entire container, how many calories will you eat? If you eat the entire container of ice cream, how many calories will you eat? 
mark down your question. You can come back. I'm going to go through these quickly. You can pause the video if you want to take time to, to answer these correctly. Question two, if you are allowed to eat 60 grams of carbohydrates as a snack, how much ice cream could you have? I'll repeat that. If you're allowed to eat 60 grams of carbohydrates as a snack, how much ice cream could you have? And again, pause the video if you need to. Question three, your doctor advises you to reduce the amount of saturated fat in your diet. You usually have 42 grams of saturated fat each day, which includes one serving of ice cream. If you stop eating ice cream, how many grams of saturated fat would you be consuming each day? That's a complicated question, I'll, re I'll read it again. Your doctor advises you to reduce the amount of saturated fat in your diet. You usually have 42 grams of saturated fat each day, which includes one serving of ice cream. If you stop eating ice cream, how many grams of saturated fat would you be able to, would you be consuming each day? You could pause and rewind to try to answer this question correctly. Question four, if you usually eat 2,500 calories in, in a day, what percentage of your daily value of calories will you be eating if you eat one serving? I'll repeat the question. If you usually eat 2,500 calories in a day, what percentage of your daily value of calories will you be eating if you eat one serving? Okay, pause the video if you need to take time to answer that and study the nutrition label. Question number five. Is it safe for you to eat, the, oh, I'm sorry, I have to, I have to read uh, some basic instructions first. Pretend that you are allergic to the following substances, penicillin, peanuts, latex gloves, and bee stings. Okay, pretend you're allergic to penicillin, peanuts, latex gloves, and bee stings. So question five, is it safe for you to eat this ice cream? Yes or no? Question six, and this is um, only if you answered no to question five. Why not? Why is it not safe for you to eat this ice cream? Okay, I am going to uh, now give you the answers to each of these questions and that uh, you can review your own answers. So if you eat this entire container of ice cream, how many calories will you eat? A thousand calories, there's 250 calories per serving, four servings in a container, that's a thousand calories. Question two, if you're allowed to eat 60 grams of carbohydrates as a snack, how much ice cream could you eat? Well, there's 30 grams of carbohydrate in each serving, so you could eat two servings or one cup. Your doctor advises you to reduce the amount of saturated fat in your diet. You, you usually have 42 grams of saturated fat, uh, which includes one serving of ice cream. If you stop eating ice cream, how many grams would you consume each day? Well, there's nine grams of saturated fat in a serving, so if you stop, you'd have 33 grams of saturated fat remaining in your diet. Question four, you usually eat 2,500 calories in a day. What percentage of your daily value of calories will you be eating if you eat one serving? Well, there's 250 calories, 250 divided by 2,500, it's 10%. You're allergic to penicillin, peanuts, latex, gloves, and bee stings. Is it safe for you to eat this ice cream? Well, if you read the ingredients, you see that peanut oil is one of the ingredients. So the answer is no, it's not safe for you to eat this ice cream. And the reason why is because it has peanut oil. So generally a score of zero to one indicates high likelihood of limited literacy. Score of two to three indicates the possibility of limited literacy. And score of four to six normally indicates high or adequate health literacy. So that's a brief video on how we measure health literacy. I hope you find it important. It's one of the sort of basic facts in health communication. Uh, and that's how we measure it, by showing people a haagen ice cream nutrition label. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this kind of video, come on over to howcommunicationworks.com, sign up for our mailing list, check out our coaching offer, uh, and we'll see you next time.